you have your Bibles, I want you to join me in Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. As you turn to that portion of Scripture this morning, in Joshua chapter 8, they have just had the first defeat of Israel under the leadership of Joshua. To this point, not just Joshua, but the Israelites have seen the hand of God in their life. And in Joshua chapter 8, they get to Ai, and because of some issues with Israel and sin in the camp of Israel, not, listen, I want to I want to use sin in a different word today. Sin, because when I say sin, you're thinking of some list you have. Oh man, were they were they doing this or were they doing that? The sin that Israel found themselves in wasn't a label of something they did. It was an act of disobedience that was created in their life. Can I tell you something? Sin always is operated out of the lack of obedience that we have for the Holy Spirit. Because no one sins and goes, oh, I didn't see that one coming. I mean, there's never, even when you're three years old, I look at little, little kids that are three, two, maybe four years old, and before they're about to do something, they do this. They look around, just like we do sometimes, just before we're about to step into disobedience. We, we look around because if no one's watching, it's not really sin, right? And that's what happens with a man by the name of Achan. His Achan looks around and no one's watching, so what will it hurt? Well, obviously, it will not just hurt him and the family, but it will hurt the kingdom. Your life is so valued by God, not just in your individual living, but in the kingdom of God. And this is where we miss the greatness of who we are in Christ. That sometimes we just think that our sin affects us. It does. Sin will never affect an individual. It always will affect people. It will affect you. It will affect your family. It will affect your church. It, it will affect your job. It will affect the way you think, the way you act, the way you work, the way you perceive. It will, it will affect the way you operate in faith or don't operate in faith. It will affect you in every area of your life just as <laughs> obedience will affect you in every area of your life. And so this morning, I want to encourage you to jump into this text with me because I love that with God, failure is never final. That with God, God sees the big picture. He realizes the humanity within our life and, 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 and that we're in the growing phase. And I pray that you're in the growing phase of your life. Because in Joshua chapter 8, Joshua is about to get some growth in a hard place. He has seen God do the miraculous. He has seen God open the, the, the Jordan. He has seen God bring the walls of Jericho down. He has watched God bring them back under the covenant that Abraham sent for them. And they got their lives right. They got all clean and, and, and religiously correct. And then they move into Ai and they have a failure. Can I tell you something? It's not whether or not you will have a failure. It's what you do with your failure that really makes the difference. That's right. It's how you operate, how you think. In Joshua chapter 8, after, after Joshua had dealt with the sin of, of Achan and the sin within the camp of Israel, God says this. I love the way that God begins Joshua chapter 8. I believe it is prophetic and it is a word for those that are here today. God says this to Joshua. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Man, that could be a whole message just right there. Do not be afraid or discouraged. It's amazing because God's reiterating the exact words that he says in Joshua chapter 1. When Joshua begins his journey eight times in Joshua chapter 1, God says, do not be discouraged or faint of heart. Do not be led by fear. Do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged. Why? Because God knows that Joshua is going to face some discouraging moments. Just like you and I. Can I tell you something? It is inevitable for all of us. Our journey one point or another will take us into a discouraging location of our life. 
But it doesn't mean we camp there. It doesn't mean that we live there. Everyone will get to a discouraging place. Here's the tragedy. That not everyone will get out of the discouraging place. That not everyone will step beyond who they are. Step into the trust of who God is within our life. It goes on to say, Take all your fighting men and attack Ai, for I have given you the king of Ai, his people, his town, and his land. You will destroy them as you destroyed Jericho and its king. But this time, you may keep the plunder and the livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the town. All the way down to verse 18. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Point the spear in your hand towards Ai, for I have, I have, I will hand the town over to you. And Joshua did as he was commanded. And as soon as Joshua gave this signal, all the men went in ambush, in an ambush, jumped up from their position and poured into the town, and they quickly captured it and set it on fire. You know, this story of Joshua is an amazing one. If there's a favorite character in the entire Bible, for me it would be Joshua. If there's a favorite book in the entire Bible, for me it would be Joshua. Because I love the conquest of Joshua. Not just what Joshua did, but what Joshua didn't do. Not what Joshua, what we see in the leadership of Joshua, in, in the book of Joshua. But how we saw Joshua follow Moses in Exodus. See, Joshua's not just a great leader. He's also a great follower. He's not just a great person that serves. He's been a great servant. And he's been a great leader. He's, he's lived in both worlds. He's lived in a world where people said we can't. And he said we can. And then lived through the can'ts. He lived through the no's so he could get to the go's. He pursued and went beyond the no's of everyone in his life. The closest people, those that were older than him, those that were younger than him, those that had more wisdom than him, those that God spoke to in a greater way than him. But he just said, you may be saying no, but I know that God is telling me to go. And I can't get it out of my spirit. And because of that that, 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 that conviction to go, it motivates him in the, in, in the messes of his life. It motivates him in the struggle of his life. It is motivating him in the difficulties of his life. Because God's go isn't just exciting on the mountaintop. It, 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 it's proficient in the valley. It is enabling in the struggle. It is strength to our heart and to our feet and to our action. And when we step out of what God is saying, do not be afraid, Joshua. Do not be discouraged. I'm with you. The fact that God has gotten you here is the faith you need that God is going to get you there. Yeah. Joshua is saying to the men, if God got us here, he's going to get us there. I'm not going to stay where I was because I'm worried about where I'm going or where I'm not going. I have a go. A go is a determination to continue to move forward. You know, you may go. It matters where you are. And it matters what the vehicle you're in. Sometimes your go is 80 miles an hour on a freeway. Sometimes your go is 10 miles an hour on a bike. Sometimes your go is a 5 mile an hour run. Sometimes your go is a .002 walk. Sometimes your go is a limp, but you're still going. See, we think there's a certain speed to the go, but every season of your life has a different speed. Because God knows the speed you need to get to the place you're going. When we get caught in that we're not getting there fast enough, we're not getting there quick enough. Have you ever made a shortcut that created a longer trip for you? <laughs> I've never done it, but I've heard. <laughs> I am the shortcut king. I mean, if there's a shortcut to be had, I'm on it. And you know what I realize? A 
these shortcuts never get you anywhere faster. They, they really don't. I, I, you know the guy that really drives me crazy? Is when I'm in traffic, it's the bicycle. Because he's a reminder that I'm not going anywhere like I think I'm going. I mean, you just speed by and see a sucker. And then we stop at the next light. Here he comes again. Oh, man, where's that? Don't go by him again. See you later. Stop at the light. Here he comes again. It's like, I'm in a car. This guy beats me to every light because I'm in traffic. It's not saying that I'm not going to my destination. It's just that I'm limited a little bit by my obstacles. And if you get discouraged by the obstacles, you'll forget that you're still on your way to your destination. Joshua gets caught in a distraction of the obstacle called Achan. Everyone in this room has an Achan in your life. The Achan is this. The spirit of Achan, which I'm being facetious, is it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. So I'm going to get what I need right now because I deserve it. I need it. I have it. I, 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 I'm owed it. But the problem is it, it, it impedes the process in your life. There's an Achan in all of us. It's, it's the place where Israel was on an unbelievable journey. They could not be stopped. Can I tell you your most vulnerable place is when you think you've arrived spiritually. <laughs> oh yeah, you'll be reminded you're human. When you, let me tell you my most vulnerable day of the week. It's Monday. Because I'm just reminded that everything I said on Sunday, oh God, let it come true. God, why did I say it? Oh man, I declared things that I don't even know if I believe that, God. Of course I believe it. But Mondays for me is a hard Why? Because Sunday is like, I'm like up here. And Monday is, welcome back to reality. Get to work. Get back to the grind of life. Get back to the things in, in your life. And, and sometimes, you ever felt like, I'll never struggle with that again? Like, oh, I beat that thing. I'll never struggle again. And then it's like, a half hour late. Like, what in the world? What just happened in my life? Israel gets so excited, but so arrogant when the walls of Jericho fell. Because they had captured the most fortified city. They had overcome something that was impossible. And the fame of Israel went through the land. They would have never thought that they're at their most vulnerable place at their greatest victory. But you know what happened? is they begin to take their eyes off the obedience and think, well, I got here, I'll just get there. But our obedience is the compass of our life. It's what tells us this is north, and I'm going to go in this direction and fulfill what God has. When you're navigating a difficult road in your life, you've got to realize that what got you here is going to be what gets you there. The God that worked all the things in your life out there, that so easily is forgotten about, He's overcome sin, struggle, addiction, issues, skeletons, broken relationships, broken hearts, failures, financial struggles. I mean, you're here, you're like, it's a miracle I'm here, but I'm not satisfied with here. So I get frustrated with my now when God, when I know God wants more for my life. Joshua can easily get stuck in the in-between moment of his life. Ai is an in-between moment in the life of Joshua. It's not just an in-between life in the life of Joshua. What's unique is if you go back into the book of Genesis, there's, there's the father of the faith, Abraham, who builds four altars on his way to Bethel. He, he builds four altars on the way to Bethel, which actually means the house of God. In his pursuit to reach the house of God, there's four altars that, that Abraham built. There, there's an altar that Abraham built right where Joshua and Israel is struggling. It's an altar of the in-between. He built an altar in an in-between moment in his life. Can I tell you something? The greatest place to build an altar, the greatest place 
place to find God is in the in-between. It's, you're not where you used to be, but you're not where maybe you should be. You're not where you once were, but you're not where you know that God wants you to go. You're, you're at the in-between. It's not that you're even supposed to be there, but you want to feel like you're in movement to there. You, you want to feel like you're, you're, you, there's a presence about what God is doing because God is speaking faith to Joshua because the devil is speaking failure to Joshua. If you go back to the sin of Achan, when Achan sins, they go to Ai, and if you don't know the story of Joshua, I want to encourage you to read it. But when they get to Ai, Joshua just says, hey, just send some of our you know, third string up there. Like we don't even, we just, we just, we just overcome Jericho. Just send the third string squad up there. Send the practice squad. And so Joshua sends his fighting men to, A, to Ai, and they literally come back beaten, bruised, some are dead. And Ai sends them running because of the sin of Achan, because of not the disobedience of just one man, but the disobedience that got in a camp. See, you don't think one person can ruin the camp? Oh, yeah, they can ruin. People talking can ruin your life. People acting in certain ways can, can hurt. People talking in a church can hurt a church. In a business can hurt a business. In a family can hurt a family. When, when things aren't right, things have to get dealt with. Or it begins to, it, it begins to get under the foundation and wash out the, 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 the ground under the foundation. It begins to make things uh, that, that should be concrete a little unsettling. And so God says you've got to deal with this. And I, I love it because Joshua, is, as a leader, he just he goes out and he starts screaming and he starts tearing his clothes, which is a sign of repentance. He starts throwing ashes on his head and dirt. And he's, he's crying out to God and God speaks this to him. Joshua, Israel is sin. Go deal with the sin. Sometimes in our life, we get so caught in our sin instead of caught in our victory. We'll talk about the sin, we'll talk about the problem, we'll talk about the issue, and we'll just, we'll concentrate on it. We'll get in the car and we'll talk about it. We talk about it to ourselves. We talk about it to our wives. We talk about it to our friends. We talk about it even to our children. And then when we worship, we wonder why it's growing, because we water it every single day. We're watering it every single day. Oh, well, they did this, 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 and this to me. They did this, 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 and this to me. Sooner or later, you got to say, this is what God has done for me. I'm not concerned about what they did against me. Let me tell you what God has done for me. Let me remind myself what God has done in my life. Well, you don't know what they did. I don't know. But I know what God is doing. I know what God wants to do. But if you keep empowering the voices of yesterday, you'll never see tomorrow. You'll always live in an in-between moment. And it allows you to be the victim of your life. And instead of being victorious, you'll be a victim. And people huddle around you. Oh, baby, oh, you poor little thing. And you love it. But you are operating in a season of unfulfillment, which brings something in your life that is lacking. And instead of pushing beyond the excuses, it is easy to park in the struggle. Because people, people will love you in your struggle. People will not always want love you in your victories. But it's easy for people to love you more in your failure. Because you'll find people that have failed and want to stay in that camp instead of stepping out into the future of what God has called them to. Sometimes we got to remind, I know what I've been through, but I know what God has done for me. I know that, that, that Abraham built an altar. It is a place of the in-between. And some get caught here for years, if not a lifetime. They start doing circles. I think Joshua, he falls on his knees and he's saying, God, not again! Man, we just overcame Jericho. I remember when we came out of Egypt and you opened the Red Sea. I remember that. But then we just 
started doing circles. Not again. I don't want to be here again. I don't want to live through this again. How long do I have to live here? How long do I have to be here? And, and God says, Joshua, get up. Just take care of the issue so that you can move on to the future. Just, just quit worrying about the failure. Deal with it. I know that isn't like the sweet Christian like, children. But sometimes you just gotta deal with it. That's why when you look in scripture that Joshua isn't holding a staff. Joshua in AI is holding a spear. Because there's moments that you lead and then there's moments that you fight. There's moments that you lead and, oh, poor baby. And then there's moments that you say, no, you get going. I remember there was a story. My poor daughter, Mariah, she's not here today, so I can share this story. But she started a basketball league, which I love basketball, so I was like, Mariah, you're going to be the greatest. I know you're only four foot three, but you're going to be amazing. She was like in fourth grade. Third grade, second grade. She was young, not love. And so, so Brian goes, and then one week she just says, Well, I'm not, I don't want to play anymore. And I said, Well, too bad. You signed up. That's right. She was like, No, no, Dad, you don't understand. I, I don't really want to play. I don't like basketball. And I said, Oh, I know. You don't ever have to play again, but you still got three weeks of basketball. Team looked for you. You signed up. You made it. And she was like, No, Dad, I, I don't think, and, and it's crazy because I, I, there's a rumor that I get into Mariah a lot, which is probably true. And I just said, no, you're not giving up. You're going to play today. And I still, and she started crying, Dad, don't make me play. I said, Mariah, you're going to either play with tears or without tears, but you're playing. So, so compose yourself and then get ready because you're going on the court in about 30 seconds. And she was like, I'm not going on the court. But she still falls. She's still obedient. She's just a little, like, emotional. I still, and what she doesn't know is it broke my heart more than it broke her heart. That's what she doesn't know. I wanted to say, go sit in the stands. Just go hang out. Come hang out with me. Let's go get ice cream. Basketball's stupid. That's what I wanted to tell her. But it wasn't about basketball. It's about life. I said, Mariah, wipe your tears. You're about to go play. I don't want to play. And I remember tears rolling down her face. She was running down the court. Like, <laughs> I thought, you know, life always isn't easy. It's not always fair. But if you, if you, if you, if you face it, right. if you don't turn and run away from it, if you just come after it, you, you'll yeah. grab hold of it. If you just will go, if you'll just get some tenacity, some right. grit, some confidence, maybe not even confidence of who you are, but confidence of who God is. Yeah, right. I mean, it, something changes in you. Worship team, come. Joshua is there on the, on the hill outside of Ai. And, and these words are ringing true in the life of Joshua. He's saying this, then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid or discouraged. Joshua, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. I got you. I, I've got you. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see through what I said I would do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work through all that I said I would work through. And in this moment, he's there. And God says, I want you to point the spear towards the city. It's unique because God always told Moses, Moses, I want you to point the staff. Because Moses shepherded people. He shepherded people. Moses wasn't a fighter. He was a shepherd. Joshua was both. He learned to shepherd people, but he also had a spear. He, he also said, all right, God, by your power, you're going to overcome AI. It's not by who we are. It's by who you are. And I think that's what we do. We get caught in these moments. The in-between plays. AI 
Ai was probably the most important place in the life of Israel. You say, well, I don't know about that because in Gilgal, you know, they were circumcised and they began to live off the greatness of God. In Jericho, they walked and they worshipped and God did amazing things. You know, later on, you see that the distribution of land becomes a part of it and they begin to work together to overcome land. All those things are great, but AI was the in-between. It was a moment. It was a struggle. It was an issue. It was failure. Where they said, I will not allow this to keep me from what God has for me. I will not allow the struggle and issue of God. I can't allow it. I've got to move on. And Joshua, I love the comeback. And you know, you might have had some setbacks. But I just want to remind you. That God prepares people with setbacks for comebacks. That's right. And I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. Lord, we love you today. We thank you that you're a good, good God. That you're a God that loves us, believes in us, cares about us, and is after us. That those that walk through the doors today with a spirit of discouragement, with a struggle of failure on their lives, does anyone care? Will I ever get out of this? Will I always feel like this? Am I always going to be plagued by this? But the God, the same God, the same God, that God is here, the same God that got you to this place, is just as passionate to get you to the next place. Don't surrender in AI. Come on, somebody in this room, don't surrender in AI. Do not surrender. Do not surrender. Do not surrender to your emotions. Do not surrender to your fear. Do not surrender to your discouragement. Do not surrender to your struggle. Do not surrender to your addiction. Do not surrender to your worry. Do not surrender to your humanity. But allow the Spirit of God to rise yes. up in your life today. Yes. Yes. Because you are more than. Yes. You are able to do exceedingly more than you think you can. And with Him, you can do all things. Through Him, yes. you will do all. With Him. in-between place. And my heart breaks for you. I've been in in-between moments where, God, can I get out of this hole? My speech has changed. My thinking has changed. My faith has changed. It's, everything is shrinking instead of growing in my life. But God said to you today, strong and encouraged. Do not be afraid or discouraged, but be strong and encouraged. Be strong and encouraged. Be strong. I called you to be strong and encouraged by my faith, by my spirit, that my spirit will never leave you nor forsake you. It will go with you both now and forever. It has never left you. It watches over you. It cares about you. You're not in a forgotten moment. You're in a moment where you're going to look back and see the faithfulness of God. You're going to look back and say, thank you for AI, God. Thank you for that person. Thank you for that struggle. Thank you for that issue, God. Because it taught me how to pray. It taught me how to push. It taught me how to not give up. You're here today. Just heads bowed, eyes closed, you're here today. Whether you realize it or not, there is a javelin, there's a spear in your hand. It's called prayer. It changes things. 
when, when you when you when you point it in the direction of God's place, it speaks to your destiny. It speaks to your future. And you're here today, and you're struggling with discouragement. You're struggling with being stuck. You're doubting not just yourself. You're doubting if God is going to get you through this. Maybe I just need to settle it. Maybe I just need to take this as normal. It's not your normal. Don't settle. Don't settle in AI. Fight for what God has for you in AI. Fight for what God wants for you. I know you're an AI, but there's a Bethel coming. <laughs> there's a place of God. You're here today, and that's you. Without hesitation, I just want you to step out of wherever you are. I know we don't do this all the time, but today, there's individuals in this room, and you need to be encouraged in your faith today. Wherever you are, I want you just to step out. I want to pray with you personally today. Wherever you are, come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because I know what it is like to be in discouragement. I know what it's like to wonder how it's all going to work out. Come on, if you're discouraged, if you're stuck, Lord, I love you today and I thank you. We're going to a new place. We're going to a new place. We're not going to get stuck in our yesterday and our today. Shake off discouragement. We shake off worry. We shake off doubt. You're the fulfiller of our life. You're the fulfiller.